Hello again. I was just taking my daily exercise on my folding bicycle. Have you seen one of these before? I'll show you how it works. Even the helmet folds away. So it's a very easy way for me to get around. This park is one of the places that you see in the Gaspar the Fox stories. The stories are based on a real little fox that came to visit me. We'll show you some other places on the way home if you like. This is Gaspar's local pub, the Rosemary Branch. There's been a pub here for hundreds of years. And in the little park behind, there used to be musical extravaganzas, wild animals, even hot air balloon rides. Lots of London pubs like this one have little theatres upstairs. And on the last Friday of the month, you can hear Honey sing the blues. And this is Clementine, another one of Gaspar's friends. I was looking forward to seeing her show, but it's been cancelled. That's because all the theatres have had to close at the moment. I wonder what she's up to. Just across the road from the Rosemary Branch is the canal. This runs right through the centre of London. Traditionally, it was a way to transport materials through the centre of the city or bring things from all over the country. Now, it's mainly used by runners and by cyclists. It's along the canal that Gaspar first makes friends with Finty, the little dog with curly brown hair. This is called a towpath, but it has nothing to do with the toes on the end of your feet. It's a different spelling. It means towing, pulling, and it was used by donkeys to pull the boats along the water. Gaspar ran along the boat and leapt towards the towpath. But as he jumped, his paw caught a rope and he tumbled, splosh, straight into the canal. The water tasted oily and his nose was covered in green weeds. Gaspar began to swim clumsily, gasping for air. Finty followed along the towpath, jumping and barking encouragement. You can do it! Come on, Gaspar! The water began to flow very quickly. The lock gates were opening. And like dirty bath water gushing down the plug hole, he was forced plop through to the other side where Finty was waiting. When Finty first meets Gaspar, he's very dirty. She thinks that he's just a very black dog. Then he gets chased and falls into the canal. This is a lock. It's a very clever way for the boats to be able to move up and down throughout the city, a bit like going up and down stairs. Some people live on boats all year round, and one of them has been transformed into a floating bookshop. It used to be moored around here, but now it lives further down the canal at King's Cross, which is too far for us to go on our hour's exercise today. But Paddy and John, who look after the boat, have sent us some photos. Known as the London Book Barge, word on the water used to move around every couple of weeks, but now has a permanent home on the stretch of canal behind King's Cross Railway Station. It's an Aladdin's cave of new and second-hand books, which you can curl up to read on a squashy cushion. In the winter, there's a stove to keep you cosy, and the barge's roof welcomes musicians and poets for open-air performances. Like a lot of bookshops, it's close to visitors just now, but when it does reopen, be sure to pay a visit and say you're a friend of Gaspar's. In the meantime, you can support Word on the Water and other independent bookshops by buying their books online. Peter the Cat's Big Word My big word is befuddled. Pronounced be fuddled. It means to be confused. You might say, Don't ask me, you gobbled your fish fingers. I'm befuddled. 
Thank you. That was Peter the Cat's big word. This is de Beauvoir Square, one of my favourite squares in London. This is the setting for the second Gaspar adventure, Gaspar Best in Show. Every autumn, a dog show is held on this little patch of grass just behind me in front of these beautiful houses. But it's a dog show with a difference. All the dogs wear fancy dress. And in our story, Gaspar gets entered into the dog show by accident. But you'll have to read the story to find out if he wins. And this is Peter the Cat's house with the big stone steps. Gaspar told Peter all about the canal and meeting Finty. Peter sniffed. Dogs can be exhausting and stupid. Not Finty, protested Gaspar. She's good at escaping and everything. Then you must bring her to meet me another day. This is my house. Peter had stopped outside an enormous house with big stone steps. And here we are, past the scruffy garages to the hole in the fence that leads to Gaspar's den. I wonder who's in Gaspar's den today. Hi, Zeb. Who said that? Down here. Oh, hello, Clementine. We just saw your poster at the theatre. I'm sorry your show was cancelled. Oh, thank you. But to cheer myself up, I thought I could visit Gaspard's den and I could show everyone how to make a Gaspard puppet. How lovely. What do we need? As luck would have it, it's all laid out here. To make a Gaspard puppet, you will need some paint, some thin cardboard from a cereal box, a pen, some wool, some glue, two pencils, some sticky tape, and a ten pence piece. Oh, and some scissors for cutting out. The first thing to do is take a cup or a mug and draw three circles on the cardboard like this. Then take your ten p piece and place it in the middle of one of the circles and draw around it. Do the same thing on the second circle and you'll end up with this. Next, draw four lines here and here and here and here. Now you need to cut out these circles with scissors. It's a good time to get a grown-up to help you. Hey, grown-up, can you cut these out for me, please? Yes, of course. That's right, Zip. Cut out around the outside or circumference of the circles. Now cut out those two middle bits. Like this? Perfect. So you will end up with one complete circle of card and two bits that look like the letter C. To make Gaspard's head, take the complete circle of card and cut halfway from the edge to the middle, like this. Carefully curl the cardboard round till it forms this shape, which is called a cone. It's quite pointy, isn't it? Because foxes have pointy noses. Stick it together firmly with sticky tape. To make Gaspard's ears, cut out two ear shapes on another piece of cardboard I think they look a little like leaves. Don't forget Gaspar has a tear in his ear. This ear what? I'll show you. There you are. Oh, this ear ear. <laughs> Anywho, bend the bottom of each ear into a little L shape and stick them inside the head with tape. And you'll end up with something like this. Now it's time to paint Gaspar's face. I looked at the illustrations and noticed he's a, he's a nice reddy brown with white patches on either side. And I used a marker pen to add his eyes, nose and a smiley mouth. Now the kind of puppet we're making is called a rod puppet. And that's because it's operated by two rods. And that's where our two pencils come in. Pencils with erasers on the bottom are best because they're safer near your eyes now, cut a piece of wool about 30 centimetres long and tie it around one of the pencils about 5 centimetres from the end. I've used a bit of tape to fix it too. Then use more tape to fix Gaspard's head to the pencil, like this. Oh, Zeb, can you guess how we're going to make Gaspard's body from these two bits of cardboard? I have no idea. 
I've got one word for you. Pom pom. Strictly speaking, that's two words. Yes, well, you put the two bits of cardboard together and you wind wool round them. Oh, Zeb, can you demonstrate, please? Certainly. Like this. That's great, Zeb. Keep winding the wool round the cardboard till it's all covered up. Then there comes quite a tricky bit. Take the scissors, slide them down in between the two bits of cardboard and cut through the wool, making sure you hold everything together. This is another bit where a grown-up comes in handy. Now take a piece of wool about 25 centimetres long and slip it in between the two bits of cardboard. Make it into a knot and pull it tight. Knot it a second time for safety, leaving two long bits of wool. Now take the cardboard off and what have you got? A pom tiddly on pom. That's four words. Now you need to make six pom poms. I've made five this nice brown Gaspardy red colour and I've made one a creamy white. Take one of the brown pom poms and glue it into Gaspard's head. Next tie the other four brown pom poms along the wool. Finish with the creamy white pom-pom. It makes the tip of Gaspard's tail. Do you know why a fox's tail is called a brush? No. Why? Because it looks like a brush. Oh. Well, here's your finished Gaspard puppet. You can move him in a very sinuous way, just like a real fox. And of course your fox could be any colour you like. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Zip. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Clementine, for making such a brilliant puppet. Send in pictures of your Gaspard the Fox pom-pom puppets for a chance to win these Gaspard goodies. This time you could win a signed copy of Gaspard the Fox along with these postcards and stickers and a golden paw print from Gaspard himself. You'll find the email address for your photos on the Gaspard the Fox website, gaspardthefox.com. Last time I showed you how to make Gaspard out of a loo roll and loads of you have been sending in pictures of yours. And you've been busy drawing pictures of Gaspar and friends too. Let's take a look at them in Gaspar's gallery. If you'd like to see your artwork in Gaspar's gallery, you'll find our email address in the den on the Gaspar the Fox website, where you can print a poster of Foxy Facts and make these delicious cupcakes. Just visit gasparthefox.com. You could also sign up to our newsletter to hear about future episodes of Gaspar's Den and where you can come and see us. Last time, James Mayhew showed you how to draw Peter the Cat and offered his picture as a prize. Let's see if he's chosen a winner. Oh, hello, Zeb. I'm just working on one of the illustrations for the next book, Gaspar's Foxtrot, which is coming out later in the summer. Would you like to see it? It's not quite finished. It's a scene set in London's Chinatown. I thought you might be in touch about judging the Peter the Cat art competition. It's been so difficult because we've had so many wonderful entries and you can see them all on the Gaspar the Fox website. But here are my top five. First of all, 
It's Dylan. I really like how he's made Peter look very fluffy here, which of course is just right because Peter's real name is Fluffy. I also really like the rainbow. Next, it's Ayan, and look at that snooty expression on Peter and the beautiful butterflies. I also really like the way he's done Peter's legs. They look very sturdy and determined there. And now it's Freya, who's done a lovely sensitive drawing and coloured it in beautifully, very skillfully with watercolour. So well done Freya, that's excellent. Carvey next, and again a really snooty expression on Peter. Just right, which really captured his superior elegance. Again, lovely butterflies. And last of all, we have Tom. Look at that puffed out chest on Peter there. Makes him look really important. I think Peter would approve of that. And as for the winner, well, we have a tie. I've chosen two winners, and you might be wondering how that's going to work, but fortunately, the two winners happen to be brothers. So well done, Kavi and Ayan. You are my winners. Congratulations on your fantastic entries and your brilliant drawings of Peter. And this will be winging its way to you in the post next week. And now I'd better get back to work on Gaspar's Foxtrot. See you soon. Bye. Thank you for all your hard work. We love to see your drawings. And don't forget to send in a photo of your Gaspar pom-pom puppet, which we'll take a look at next time. Until then, bye for now. If you'd like to hear the Gaspar audiobooks, just ask your smart speaker for Gaspar the Fox or Gaspar Best in Show. Thank you.